Let us do a comparative study between the BFS and the DFS algorithms. And here we will be going for the comparative study, the complexity al uh, calculations and for which type of graphs, which algorithms will be suitable, for what purpose, which algorithm will be suitable, we will be discussing all this stuff. Here is the text. Comparisons and complexities of DFS and BFS algorithms. So at first here we are going to discuss the DFS algorithm. The algorithm is called DFS because it initiates as many recursive calls as possible before it returns from a call. Please watch our previous videos where you have discussed this BFS and DFS algorithms and proper explanation through one examples. So, those uh, videos are in continuation. Okay. So, please watch them so that you can have the better understanding. The recursion, so it initiates the recursive call. You know that in case of DFS algorithms, we have shown that we will be going for the recursive calls as much as possible to explore. But when the exploration will be blocked, there will be no other adjacent node to get explored. Then you shall retrace back and then you shall go to the higher level for the other opportunities and possibilities. So, again I am repeating the algorithm is called DFS because it initiates as many recursive calls as possible before it returns from a call. I have discussed that one. The recursion stops only when exploration of the graph is blocked and can go no further. There will be no adjacent node. I cannot explore, explore further than the recursion will get blocked. Then recursion unwinds to alternative possibilities at the higher levels can be explored. So now it will return back to the caller and then from there it will explore if there are some unexplored, untraversed opportunities. It can be applied in game tree to implement a particular strategy to win. DFS algorithms we mainly use in the game tree. We know that we are having some game rules, we are having some game and then we shall go on playing with the game with, with our opponents. In those cases, this DFS algorithm will be the most suitable one to get implemented. DFS can also do node numbering. So, while traversing all these nodes, the node numbering can also be done by DFS. The time taken by this algorithm is big theta of max of A comma N. A is the number of edges and n is the number of nodes. So, depending upon the relative values between this a and a, whichever is maximum that will decide the complexity of this particular algorithm. We know that if we if we uh, if we do not allow any kind of parallel paths, if we do not allow any kind of loops, then for a connected graph, in case of connected simple graph, we will be having minimum number of edges will be n minus 1 and maximum number of edges will be n into n minus 1 whole by 2. So, A will be lying in between this n minus 1 and n into n minus 1 whole by 2. Okay, so, that is the complexity for the DFS. Now, let us come for the BFS. When DFS arrives at some node V, it next tries to visit some neighbor of V. Here we have used the term neighbor that means the adjacent. Then a neighbor of this neighbor and so on. So, in this way the algorithm will go on doing the recursion. Unlike DFS, now we are concentrating on the BFS now. BFS is not recursive. It has the same complexity as that of DFS, namely big theta of max of A comma N. So, that is the complexity we will be having also for these BFS algorithms. But here the BFS algorithm is not recursive in that sense. As BFS searches breadth wise, so the, now the tree will be not graph rather, the graph will be searched, searched in the breadth wise. So, it searches for the search node to all elements available in that level. So, its execution memory requirement may be too high to incorporate and that is the main uh, disadvantage whatever you can say that is for the BFS because if a certain node has got so many neighbors then it will keep the traces of all these neighbors in the queue, in our queue data structure it will go on keeping, in our algorithm we have, we did that one also. And that is why during execution and those neighbors to neighbors, all neighbors at that particular level, at that particular level go on, uh, they will be kept in the queue for the further explorations. 
So that's why the runtime storage requirement, memory requirement of this BFS algorithm will be tremendously high. But in spite of low memory requirement, DFS may search for a searching node in such a direction where the solution does not exist. So it's very difficult to select. You see, in case of BFS, the runtime uh, storage requirement, the memory requirement is too high. But in case of DFS, it may go to a certain depth to search a particular node where the node does not exist. It is existing in some other with some other neighbors or adjacent nodes. So that is the main disadvantage of this DFS. But in spite low memory requirement in case of DFS algorithm, DFS may search for a searching node in such a direction where the solution does not exist. So it may increase the searching time complexities in certain cases. So this is the comparative study between the BFS and the DFS and which is recursive, which is not recursive, which is requiring more memory spaces during its execution, which is requiring lesser memory spaces during execution, but may search for a node at a certain depth where the node does not exist. So there are different comparative studies we have analyzed. I think you are getting this idea. So thanks for watching this video.